No, you are not going to be drafted. Calm down. In response to the hashtag trend of World War III in France, Ferdinand, and the fears of escalation between the U.S. and other countries, the website for the Selective Service shut down. It was overloaded. And they said it was due to the spread of misinformation. So I want to go through a few things in this segment with you. First of all, no, you're not going to be drafted. I'll explain why. We'll talk a little bit about the history of the draft. And I also want to explain in no uncertain terms, no, Donald Trump did not just start World War III. Everyone needs to calm down. This was a serious escalation, but the escalation has been ongoing back and forth for a long time now. Nobody, nobody says anything in the press when Obama drone strikes, you know, thousands of people, okay? So you need to understand that the media overhypes everything. And right now we are in the era of orange man bed. Take it with a grain of salt. It's possible World War III, whatever, fine, but very unlikely. This kind of thing has happened before. It will happen again. It is bad. I'm not excusing what Trump did. I'm not playing what about ism. But you have to understand when Obama was going through his foreign policy, there was nothing from the mainstream press. There were no there were no there was no scare tactics or concerns. What we're really seeing is that an election is coming up and people are using this to go after Trump. That's really what it's about. Again, not an excuse for what Trump did. You know, even Tucker Carlson did a segment saying, what is he thinking? We need to fix our own country. But before we get all that, let's talk about what's going on with the draft, because that's the crux of what I'm trying to get to you guys today. The website was shut down. People are are losing it. Scared they will be drafted. It won't happen. The Selective Service said, due to the spread of misinformation, our website is experiencing high traffic volumes at this time. If you're attempting to register or verify registration, please check back later today as we are working to resolve the issue. We appreciate your patience. Okay, you are not going to be drafted. I'll say for the millionth time. And the New York Times has a good story explaining the law where we're currently at. But I do want to talk about the legality of the selective service. And I want to talk to you about why, why they don't need to draft anybody right now. Before we get started, head over to timcast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There are several different ways you can give. But the best thing you can do is share this video to help overcome YouTube's biased algorithms that are tending to shut down independent news and political commentary. Seriously, if you guys share it, it's the most powerful way to overcome YouTube restricting content. And I got to admit... I've been, I've been saying for a while, like, hey, share this video. And I believe if I didn't say that, this, I'd be completely defunct by now. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. So we've got some big changes coming up. I'm doing a new show. We'll see what happens. But let's read. First, who is eligible for the draft? The draft ended in 1973 and the military changed to an all-volunteer force. Currently, all men ages 18 to 25 are required by law to provide basic personal information to the Selective Service. Uh, selective Service system not doing so is illegal. In fact, it's a felony you can get five years in prison. Yeah, let's talk about that, huh? The selective service system is conducting business as usual. In the event that a national emergency ne- necessitates a draft, Congress and the president would need to pass official legislation to authorize a draft, which is not going to happen anytime soon. You know what? So maybe that's bad for us in a way, but I guess good for the individual. You know, I, I really don't see Congress and, and Trump unless, you know, short of like, I don't know, nuclear Armageddon. It's just it's just we're not there. It's listen, man, the media is screeching a million screeches because they, they it's election season. I don't know why. I, I think it's a terrible idea what Trump just did because for a lot of reasons. Even, you know, like I said, Tucker Carlson, you get in the left to agree with Tucker Carlson. You know, something's going on. Let's read. They say in earlier drafts, there were a number of deferments. That could have kept someone from being drafted, such as medical conditions or attending college. Knowing this, individuals appeared to be uh, researching federal student aid, which provides federal student aid to college students from the U.S. Depart- uh, Education Department. Registering the Selective Service has been a long-standing requirement to receive federal student aid, a federal job. Federal student aid tweeted from their official Twitter. However, the U.S. military has been an all-volunteer uh, has been all-volunteer since 1973, and Congress would need to pass a new law to institute a draft. There is no priority uh, order for selective service based on the FAFSA form. They use a random lottery number and year of birth. So I will say this. Let's say for the sake of uh, argument, there's a draft. Most young people are Democrats. So Republicans probably aren't concerned about losing votes if they say, fine, we'll draft people because Republicans tend to be older. But think about the House, the Democrats voting to institute a draft. Never going to happen because they would lose all of the youth support. So yeah, not likely. It is, it is complicated. You know, I'll, I'll admit it. I, I just, look, short of a li- literal like nuclear strike, it's just not going to happen. I want to talk to you guys about war and why the theater of war has changed and why it's just extremely unlikely we, we, we face the kind of war that we faced in the, uh, in the past, right? 
I'll, I'll, I'll get to that because I do want to talk about the gender stuff and the Supreme Court rulings because they have this in the CNN article. They say women were exempt from the draft. Uh, in 1981, the Supreme Court upheld a congressional decision to exempt women from registering for the, for the selective service, deciding that because women were restricted from combat, there would be no need for their services in the event of a draft. I'm going to say full stop. That's BS. OK, even if women can't fire a gun, women can do other things like manufacturing. So I think that's absurd that you wouldn't you know, require women to be drafted. It's not like every draft is going to be combat, is it? I guess apparently so. All combat roles. But there's still things they could do. They could change that. However, check this out. In 2015, the Obama administration opened all military occupational specialties to women, including combat jobs. Since then, women have graduated from the Army Elite Ranger School, served on submarines, and completed Marine Corps artillery officers training. A federal judge ruled in February 2019 that the all-male draft was unconstitutional. You're right. Saying historical restrictions on women in the military may have justified past discrimination. Men and women now have many similar roles. The judge's decision had no immediate effect as it did not block the government's current policy. Any appeal by the Selective Service System would go to the New Orleans-based Fifth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals before it would reach the Supreme Court. It is uncertain whether it would reach that level. The Selective Service System has urged U.S. District Court Judge Grain Miller to reject the case, largely because the National Commission on Military, National, and Public Service, appointed by Congress, is now studying the mail-only registration policy. The commission is supposed to develop a report and recommendations by March 2020. So I do have another story from, uh, from the New York Times we'll go through. But I will point out, according to the Selective Service, the draft is constitutional. And I, I'm going to say it right now. I think the draft can be a good thing. You may be shocked to hear that. Yes, I am a quite lib- you know, liberty-minded individual. But I'm talking about in the case of like, you know, foreign invaders charging into, US, into the U.S. Like, yeah, then it's, it's like, hey, man, you got to fight to, you know, to defend yourself. But short of that, I don't believe a draft for a foreign war makes sense. You know, like Vietnam was insane. It's like, oh, we better send our soldiers over to a foreign country. Nah, sorry. I know you're scared of the spread of communism and all that stuff. Fine. But unless they're coming here, you got a a bad argument. I'll tell you this, man. I do not believe the U.S. could be conquered. Period. I believe it is physically impossible. And that's why I'm like, draft, don't need it. Okay? Think about it this way. If, if, If they come... And confiscate, you know, let's say they appeal the Second Amendment, or I'm, I'm sorry, repeal the Second Amendment. Sure, yeah, then maybe we could be. But for the time being, what's that saying? Like behind every blade of grass is a gun. There's no way. There's no way. You, you, they, they, they could send a, a million soldiers to the West Coast, storming the beaches, and they would have no chance because there's just too many weapons in this country. I'm sorry. You know, if there's one one good thing that comes out of, you know, uh, the 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 to Second Amendment debate or whatever. There's, there's one thing that's undeniable, I should say, is that we're unconquerable. Sorry, we, we have trouble dealing with some of these issues ourselves, and we're arguing amongst ourselves about mental health versus, you know, the Second Amendment. But at least nobody in, is going to be invading us. So I don't, we, we don't need a draft. You know, you know we, don't need, we don't need it. Because on every street corner, you're going to have a dude who's armed to the teeth, and it's just not going to happen. You, you think La Resistance in France was powerful. Wait, wait till literally every single person is walking around armed to the teeth. It's just, so I, I don't see a draft as being necessary, but, but let's read a little bit more from this. And I, what I really want to get to is, you know, outside of the laws on the draft and, and some of this information, war has changed. It's not going to be the same. It is not going to be what you think it's going to be. It's going to be diplomatic, economic, and, and, and cyber attacks. The New York Times asks, is there going to be a draft? Well, they point out, for one, we have an all mil- all voluntary force with 1.2 million active troops, and Congress would have to pass a new law. That we know. They say, what is the draft age? We get that. What are the consequences if you don't register? Well, I don't think they show the specific ones, but there are permanent consequences if you don't register, like you can't get federal grants. But more importantly, it is a felony. Five years in prison, a $250,000 fine. I really doubt they'll go after anybody for this. And you can only register between the ages of 18 and 26. After that, you can't register. And then I think you just don't get benefits or something. I honestly have no idea. Can women be drafted? No. We went over this. Let's move on. Are there arguments for reinstating the draft? And this is what I want to bring you to at the New York Times. They say, in the 1860s, mobs of mostly foreign-born white workers took to the streets of New York City to protest conscription during the Civil War, burning down buildings and inciting violent attacks against black residents. A century later, Burning draft cards became a symbol of protest against the, Viet, uh, against the war in Vietnam. 
I think it's fair to say that the draft has never been wildly popular. But she said there were arguments in favor of a modern day draft, including the potential to make the military more representative of society. And there we go. Off to the races. That's right. Diversity and inclusion. We need a draft because our military is just too white and male. You heard it first from the New York Times. The current all-volunteer force is more likely to recruit people from the working class, she said, with higher percentages of non-white Americans serving in uniform. Okay, it's the opposite. I'm sorry. I don't know what it means in a democracy that you let some people fight your wars and everybody is not responsible. American citizens are not implicated in the consequences, bodily human life, economically of war, and they should be. So actually, I guess what they're saying is there's not enough white males serving in the military. I, whatever, man. The argument is they literally put forward in the New York Times is diversity. Well, let me tell you about diversity because I'll tell you something interesting. According to a report or so, so, citations in Wikipedia, I just pulled this up. They say that the, the term male in the selective service system uh, is, refers to your sex observed at birth. That would mean trans women are required to register and trans men are not. To me, I got to say, that seems silly because even, you know, if you want to get into the argument about trans women in sports and all that, I think it's fair to say that trans women, trans women do observe um, physical disadvantages to cis- cisgendered males, right? Whatever, we, we can argue about the sports thing, but that's, that's just true. And trans men do have testosterone advantages. I just think the whole thing's silly. I think, it, it, look, if we're going to have anybody register, everybody should register. We can find something for you to do in the event that we need you to do it, Okay. So here, here, here's the thing. First, everybody is screeching that we're going to be having World War III, and I do think it's fair to point this story out from the National Review. Russia warns U.S. of grave consequences of Suleimani killing. That, that's just about it. I don't need to get into the full details. But I think, as I pointed out uh, before, I think it's kind of absurd that you can have people on Twitter screeching that Trump is following Putin's orders. He gets off the phone with Putin, does what Putin wants, while simultaneously the news is saying that, you know, Putin is upset by this and we're entering World War III. Let me just tell you something. If it was true, okay, that Russia was, was uh, leading Putin, or I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Russia was leading Trump and telling him what to do, but, well, how could there possibly be a World War III if Trump works for Russia? Pick your narrative and stick to it, okay? The fact is, Trump does not work for Russia. So yes, unfortunately, there is a a slight likelihood we enter into a massive international conflict. But as I stated earlier, everybody's screeching about World War III. They're doing it because it's election season. It's powerful fuel against Trump. It will rile up young people who are scared of the draft. And I I swear you're gonna have people saying like, hey man, if you're 18, you better go vote for the Democrat because Trump's going to draft you. No, it's not going to happen. Let me explain something about war to you guys. We are in the digital age. Too much money is across country lines, okay? There are powerful multinational billion dollar, trillion dollar interests that are saying you better not go to war, period. Russia would lose way too much and so would China. Take a look at what's going on with the trade war. I really do think, while it's possible we see military escalation, we see, we see conflict, conflict is not going to be people marching in the streets. We're just, we're just so far beyond that. The, the, the infrastructure has cyber weaknesses. Cyber attacks are substantially more likely. Economic attacks are, are especially more likely. Trade war is dramatically more likely. And, and there is a possibility that all of these trade lines and international, you know, agreements could break down, resulting in a straight conflict. But what you, what you need to understand is Russia has a lot of dependencies on the U.S. and vice versa. There have been concerns that Russia just built an intranet, meaning an internal internet that is just in their country. So there are a lot of concerns about this. There's another report saying that Russia just cut off, uh, um, I believe it was gas supplies to Belarus because they're trying to pull Belarus into the fold. There are concerns that there could be a dramatic global conflict. I get it. But you, what you are more likely to see is economic crippling. Let me explain something to you guys. What is, let, let me ask you a question. What is the purpose of full-on, full-scale military conflict? To gain control of something. So when you have a country like Iran who's engaging in extra militaristic activities with Mr. Suleimani going into foreign countries and helping lead various militia groups and organizations throughout the Middle East. How do you control those people? Well, it's very hard to reach them. 
You can't change their minds. They're getting violent because they can't change your minds. Basically, we're fighting over control of certain resources, certain ideologies, certain territories. For the most part, when someone wins a conflict, they seize control and implement their rules and they utilize the resources as they see fit. We don't need to do that anymore. Today, we're in the era of information warfare and economic warfare. Sanctions are substantially more powerful at this point. And so, yes, you will see Iran, you know, lash out violently because of the sanctions crippling their country. And it's true. The sanctions are are heavily harming Iran, but that's about all they can do. So right now we have this massive global trade infrastructure. Trump has, to a certain extent, been, you know, starting trade wars and and been, um, I guess, kind of hostile to a lot of the international agreements we have. But all, all I think we'll really see is regional proxy conflict. Most Americans, if not all, oppose war. The Trump cheerleaders who are coming out and and screeching, they are a small minority. The fact is nobody wants this. Tucker Carlson of Fox News ran a segment saying, what are you doing? We got to fix our country. If there's one thing ever that will prevent war, it is trade. And the fact is, we have certain things other countries need. And if they go to war, it's really, really bad. Now, let me explain some of the, the actual concerns, though. Trump has bolstered the economy meaning we can be substantially more independent, producing natural gas and fossil fuels on our own, allowing, allowing us to be self-sustaining during a major international conflict. Trump has, you know, called out NATO and said they're not paying and tried withholding aid to various countries. This could theoretically open the door to foreign influence like China and Russia moving into certain territories, sparking more regional conflict, which results in a tit for tat like what we're seeing in Iran, which ignites a greater global conflict. But I believe it is just First, I will say, I believe the odds are against it. I think you're fine. There's a reason why they're not going to do the military draft. I'll come back to this in a second. But let me just say the odds are absolutely against major militaristic international conflict. Okay. Now about the draft. You know what makes the draft uh, not first? The draft doesn't work because you're forcing people who don't want to be in war to be in war. And then you're going to get an ineffective and angry army. It's just not what you need. What you need is a volunteer force who is enthusiastic about fighting either for honor or for money. Here's the thing. The all volunteer force requires incentives. You tell people we'll give you benefits, we'll pay for your school, and then you will get a more willing, a more compliant army. Imagine what would happen if you drafted a bunch of Antifa. It's just n- not not a good idea. Not a good idea at all, right? And the far left is a growing faction. Just imagine how, how brutal it would be if you took all these young people who are mask-wearing, brick-throwing lunatics and said, yeah, yeah, we get all that, but we're putting you in, an, in a suit with a gun anyway. Yeah, nah, not a good idea. I think the best argument against why we probably won't see it is really just political, as if Congress... The Democrats are going to be the ones to actually vote to instate it. Never going to happen. But in the event the Republicans reclaim the House, it'll be substantially more likely, though still very, very, very unlikely. But in the end, I think my point is apt, right? Could you most most younger people are voting Democrat. Most of them are for Bernie. Could you imagine these young far left socialist types who like hate the, the, the uh, America and accuse it of being colonialist, militaristic, U.S. imperial, whatever. And then them being like, I hear what you're saying. You hate this country. You think it's evil. Here's a uniform and a gun. That, that, that not going to happen. It's just absurd. I think what's more likely to happen is following the, elect, the re-election of Donald Trump, there will be an economic downturn in the event of an actual conflict. So here's, here, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me uh, predict it for you. The economy is doing really, really well. However, After Trump took this military action at the Baghdad airport against Suleimani, we saw stock prices fall. There's there's fear the economy could be damaged because of war. I think we're not going to see anything. It's possible come uh, late this year, Trump is reelected. Now that Trump is on his last term, the Republicans take the House and have control. Trump can be a bit more heavy handed knowing that this is it. There's no more reelection. It's time to go full speed ahead. In the event that there is a major escalation of conflict and the economy gets hurt, you will then see people voluntarily signing up for the military because the economy will be bad. Economic factors, and it's my understanding, typically predict enlistment into the military. No one is going to force a bunch of angry young people to fight again because it was a really bad idea and it's just not going to work. In the event that we are invaded, I think, yeah, maybe, absolutely, but not for foreign war. So so let me just wrap it up, a few ideas. For one, There would have to be a new law passed. That's not going to happen. There's no cooperation right now. Maybe if the Republicans reclaim the House, it's possible, but very unlikely today for political reasons. 
The second, the military theater of war is dramatically different today. We, we are not, we, we don't need a mil, two million people marching in the streets of a foreign country. We need to control the minds of the people to gain access to their resources. So we're in information warfare. And, you know, lastly, economic incentives are always better. And a military that hates you and hates your country is not someone you want to give a gun and put out in the middle of nowhere. So I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. You're not going to get drafted. Calm down. Um, I don't know. I, I think most of the people who watch my content are actually, oh, like it's like the, I think, you know, like 60 per 70, 65 percent are uh, 25 to 54. So if you find yourself in that 18 to 25 bracket or whatever, you don't got anything to worry about. So I'll leave it there. Stick around. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. at youtube.com slash Timcast News. It is my second channel. Check it out. Thanks for hanging out.